Yo, you cannot tell me this team isn't tanking, y'all. Yo. You you cannot. I'm so convinced at this point that this team is tanking. You you cannot tell me that it isn't. It's not even the second half yet, right? It's not even the end of the first half. There's still five minutes and like 24 seconds left in the second half. So, you know, I'm, I'm talking about coming off of the Giants' second touchdown drive. By the way, Darius Slayton, you know, good run, bro. Nice touchdown. You developing way better than I thought you would initially for a six-round pick. So good on you, man. Love what I'm seeing out of him. Love the track speed. Love that his hands are a bit more safe and secure now than they were earlier in the year. All that. But you can't me tell me this team is tanking, bro. Let me start on the defensive side. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm kind of hyped up right now about this because I don't know how to feel. I'm a little bit disappointed that the team gave up so soon, but... At the same time, those of you who've been watching my videos the past couple weeks know that I'm not opposed to tanking because, I mean, this team is really bad. I would go as far to say that we need to start from scratch, man. Like, start from everything, scrap everything. You know what I'm saying? There's probably only, like, a maximum amount of five good players on this team replace everybody else. But let's start on the defensive side, man. The defensive side, they're just not playing, right? At least for the first, you know, quarter, it looked like they're just not playing, right? Anytime anybody catches the ball our defense doesn't tackle and it's because they don't try to tackle it's not that they don't know how to tackle anytime i'm looking at robbie anderson looking uh you know catching a ball running in the open field and antoine Bate and tripping on thin air or you know what i'm saying just putting out one arm to try and tackle i'm like he's not trying anytime on the second touchdown i don't know who it was that like ran like basically they they did a simple post route tripped up Whoever the defensive back was guarding them, and then the only person running after them like it was an actual football game was Janoris Jenkins, who we've seen already give, you know, questionable effort throughout the entire season. But Antoine Bethea and I think it was DeAndre Baker up that were closer to this receiver just stopped running against him like right away. You know what I'm saying? They just gave up. They're not trying to tackle. Anytime any receiver from any team catches a ball in the Giants, you know, territory and whatnot our defensive backs just give up they're like they don't want to play and the same could be said for the linebackers alec oldtree except for this you know last defensive drive where uh where he he made a stop in the run he he gives up man like this entire defense just gave up they're trying to lose that's what it looks like on the defensive side and then on the special team side pat Shermer is definitely trying to tank bro you don't go for an ill-advised two-point conversion play when your special teams you know they already have enough problems with making consistent field goals you don't go for that two-point conversion especially when that jets defense has been dominating you that's a bad call and to me it just looks like they're trying to lose it looks like they're trying to tank and i don't know how to feel about it i really don't the only part of the team that doesn't look like they're trying to lose that looks like they're still going out there playing this as though it's sunday football as though they're getting paid millions of dollars to to play the game is the offense and that's because it's for the development of Daniel Jones. You don't want to stunt his development. But even then, there's, there's certain people that don't be trying, man. Uh, receivers that are supposed to be blocking for others, they're not trying. You know what I'm saying? What I mean by that is, um, like, uh, say Golden Tate catches the ball, the other receivers are not blocking. Say Darius Slayton catches the ball, the other receivers are not blocking. That was shown just on the last touchdown drive. Benny Fowler was right behind him. He could have blocked some guys, and he didn't. Luckily enough, Slayton had you know, that speed to make it into the end zone. But the fact remains that some people on offense are not trying. And then this offensive line is terrible. And I know we're missing two players. I know we're missing our starting center in Jalapio, but Spencer Pulley is good enough. He did a great job last year considering that we got him off waivers. And Nick Gates is filling in for Mike Remmers. But honestly, I don't know if he's that bad compared to Remmers. Remmers was already bad enough. The offensive line can't block for anything, man. Anybody could get through. It's, you know, it's like a buffet. You know, buy one, get one free, man. Anybody could go and sack Jones. And then Saquon, I don't know what's up with it. If it is still his injury, if it is the offensive line, if he's mentally not there, if it's Pat Shermer, or if it's all four of those, but Sa <coughs> excuse me, guys, I, I kind of got a cold. But Saquon, for the life of me, for anything, just seems to not be able to run the football. And it's since he came back. I don't, I don't know what it is. But I'll be back, you know, in the second half, guys. Yo! Solar is out with a concussion. They just reported on the TV just what we needed, man. You know what? I'm taking the stance now, guys. We gotta. I hate to say this because I've never said it before. We, man, it's time to tank, bro. Offensive line, which was already bad, is now in shambles. Defense, 
which was bad and supposed to be improving is just bad and terrible with more and more inconsistent each week uh saquon's you know saquon i don't know what's up with him but like Shermer's play calling stays the same which isn't a good thing you know the offensive line ruins things for daniel jones which then also ruins a lot of things for saquon who's coming back from injury defensive backfield is not good at all linebacking core has also been in shambles since like week three defensive line which is supposed to be our strongest part of our uh you know of the defense isn't good at all like guys yeah they're getting run stops but there's a reason bj hill was replaced and there's a reason leonard williams is still technically you know kind of auditioning for the team remember what james Betcher said about bj hill last year oh he's the most nfl rookie i've ever seen so what happened this year then why he got replaced it means our defensive line isn't nearly as good as we thought it was do i think the team needs a complete overhaul i don't know yet man Am I overreacting off of one half of football against the New York Jets? I don't think so, but maybe I'll feel different a couple days from now. Who knows? But you know what? It's time to go get that premier pass rusher or that premier left tackle, man. I don't really want a premier wide receiver like Jerry Judy or um another guy from Oklahoma. I forgot the other one's name because that's not that's not near the top of our priority list. We really need a pass rusher. Or more importantly, an offensive lineman, man. That that's just me. That's just me. Like maybe we could get a pass rusher in in the off season. I don't know. Is the JV on Clowney locked up? I'm not sure. Maybe if we get Shaq Barrett off the Bucks. I I don't know, man. Maybe Von Miller. I don't know. But I do know there's gonna be a couple defensive uh, linemen or linebacking pass rushers out there in this year's uh, free agency, and then we could get the offensive lineman that we need in the draft. That's just me, man. I'm kind of. So tired and fed up with this team, y'all. So tired and fed up. <laughs> Once again, I'll be back, you know, <laughs> maybe at the half, maybe at the end of the game. I'll let y'all know. Yo, this team just keeps showing me more and more that we need to rebuild from scratch, man. Like, for real. Like, like what's happening, Rosas? Come on, bro. Like, what's, ha what's happening, man? Come on, talk to me. Rosas, is there something, like, was last year a fluke? Did you, did you hoodwink all of us? In the words of Stephen A. Smith, did you bamboozle all of us? Because your rookie year was absolutely atrocious and everybody wanted you off the team. You come on last year, your sophomore year, bam, all of a sudden you're the second best kicker in football. I was calling you the best kicker in football. You come back this year and your stats are very similar and very much the same as they were your rookie year. So is last year the fluke? Like, is last year the fluke, or, or is there something, you know, like, are you not there fully mentally? Like, is there some type of problem in your personal life or something? Like, what's happening, bro? Like, why are you missing extra points in field goals? And yes, I know it was a long extra point, but that was basically a field goal. Ah, I keep my bad, guys. I have a cold, so I'm enunciating the wrong words. It was basically a field goal, right? And what was it, like, 43 yards, like, Based off of last year, you should be able to make that no problem. I don't know what's happening, but team keeps showing us more and more why you got to rebuild, man. Like, great catch by Golden Tate, great run by Golden Tate. Nice blocking, but that doesn't take away the fact what I said earlier, that the receivers just don't block when the, uh, the guy that has the ball, you know, the runner has the ball and is in the open field because that was a designed play. That was a designed blocking play. Um, Daniel Jones, man keeps having his ups and downs and yo conspiracy theory time well first let me say what i was gonna say he needs to improve improve his uh pocket awareness that is something that definitely has to improve you cannot just have jamal adams come up to you and like it looked like dj didn't even really see him and he get, he literally took the ball out of jones's hand and then just ran in for the touchdown you can't let that happen that's all about pocket awareness but my conspiracy theory was that uh pat Shermer is like willingly you know on purpose calling the plays to make daniel jones look good and he's doing that to the detriment of saquon saquon might be a great running back and he might be the best in the league but he's still developing because he's still a sophomore it still is only his second year do not stunt the growth and do not destroy the confidence do not mentally uh you know denigrate a player for the sake of uplifting another don't do that, Pat Shermer. That's a, first of all, that's a terrible head coaching move. That's a terrible coaching move in general. That's a, that's a terrible move for anything, you know, in any sport. 
Don't stunt the growth of another player who is the best on your team for the sake of bringing up another because you don't want to look like a fool. Because that, that's what I think is happening here. He's calling all these plays to make Daniel Jones look good. It's a very pass-heavy offense, but the offense is not structured for that. The, the players that we have and the structure that we have, the foundation is, is a very run-first offense. But he's not calling it like that because he wants to make the quarterback that he picked that everybody ridiculed him for, you know, along with Dave Gellman, he wants to make him look good. But we already know Daniel Jones has foundations to look good. He, we've seen flashes. We've seen what he can do. So don't stunt the growth of Saquon. Don't destroy him mentally for the sake of making your quarterback look good. He will develop as he will develop. You know what I'm saying, man? Sometimes it will be ugly. Peyton Man's rookie year, very ugly. Sometimes it would be great, like the first year of Patrick Mahomes. Other times it's in between, but quarterbacking is a very fickle thing. It will develop. But once again, don't, because that's what I feel like he's doing. I feel like he's trying to make Daniel Jones look good, you know, calling all these plays, scheming up the offense to make him look good, being very stale in the run game. The commentator even brought it up that the plays they're calling for Saquon are just very repetitive, not very creative. They're the same thing over and over and over again. Don't do that for the sake of promoting your quarterback, okay? I'll be back, guys. All right, so... It's like the two-minute warning right now. The game technically isn't over, but I don't see a way the Giants come back and win this unless there's a miracle play. I don't know. Miracle at the Meadowlands Part 3, except this time it works out for the Giants. Some Jamal Adams-type play, fumble recovery for a touchdown, you know, pick six. Unless something like that happens, I don't see us winning this game. And before I relist the negatives that you guys have heard through this uh weird Jets recap video that turned into a rant about the problems with the team let me let me go with some positives Daniel Jones is improving he's uh there's still a lot of problems there but he's improving he's showing that he knows when he has to get rid of the ball now you know the very few times that he does sense the uh, pocket collapsing and when he does see a defender coming for him he's trying to get the ball out a lot more now and he's not just getting it out with risky throws He's either throwing it out of bounds, which he did a couple times this game, or he's, you know, throwing it into the ground, but within, you know, a wide receiver's or a potential receiver's range to avoid that intentional grounding call. So he's improving in that sense. He's also uh, learning when to pick his running routes, you know, uh, on plays that are not designed for him to run, which there hasn't been a lot of that lately, and I would want a bit more of that. He has that talent and that skill for a reason. But... He's shown on one particular play, I think it was a third and 10, and he ran for the first down after uh, spinning out of a tackle. And that was really good, showing that grit, showing the strength, showing the athleticism, and showing he knows when to choose his running lanes and knows which running lane to go into. So there's positives there. There's positives in the fact that, uh, once again, Darius Slayton, who I already spoke upon, really stepping up to the mantle of the receiver to be called, to be called on for this Giants team when we're, you know, down receivers when we're down players and whatnot uh the defensive line as the game went on got better they were getting more consistent pressure you know that inside line there especially from leonard williams dalvin Thompson was seen a couple times in the backfield stuff and live bell and all that and you know what in general the defensive line improved play as the game went on the offensive line and the only reason i'm mentioning the offensive line is because on the two golden th tate throws they had perfect blocking and they actually gave Danny Dimes some time. They actually allowed him to be Danny Dimes. But that's about the only time they were good, which leads me back into the negatives. Uh, which I'll start, I'll try and list them from the beginning from this video. The defense as a whole can't tackle for anything and they look like they don't want to tackle. The defense looks like they gave up. The defense looks like they don't want to play out there. They're not mentally motivated. Specifically linebackers and defensive um the defensive backers they're literally letting anybody and everybody run up on them get the score and then leave it's like it's like swiss cheese defense out there that's the, that's the term i was looking for for the longest it's like a swiss cheese defense anybody could score on us by any play through any means necessary the offensive line is also swiss cheese anybody could get a sack once again buffet free open all day man you want to sack daniel jones go ahead you want to get a qb rush go ahead you want to get some pressures go ahead it's really annoying because it was supposed to be a fixed offensive line. And then on top of that, three of our starters go down. Left tackle, right tackle, center. The only two left out there were our only two good players uh, in Will Hernandez and Kevin Zeitler. On the offensive side, uh, let me start with receiver blocking and, you know, tight end blocking and whatnot. 
if it's not a design play where they're supposed to block, these guys are not blocking for anything. Once again, they look just like the linebackers and the defensive backs. They're not motivated enough to do it. And that's because it's a losing team and because, you know, it's not exactly a good coaching room. Which brings me back to Pat Shermer and my kind of conspiracy theory. If you are stunting the growth and development of Saquon Barkley, and if you're not, you know, if you're not going out of your way to try and make this dude be the best version of him because all you're doing is running repetitive, stale plays then why are you here you know what i'm saying don't do that in order to promote the growth of another you can do b the both of them at the same time that's in fact why they're there together i but if that's it i mean we're gonna get the ball back with 30 seconds that's about it let me know what you all think what you think about this giants versus jets game video kind of all over the place but i want to hear your thoughts on my uh my pat Shermer rant and i'm out your hi right, guys thanks for watching put your comments down below make sure you smash that like button subscribe and turn on post notifications until next time i'm out your